One of the things that I have been messing with and trying to, I think perfect is the wrong word, but come up with my own kind of permanent solution technique, um, deciding how I'm going to do it forever and ever and ever. Um, you know, I've been watching a lot of videos on how people choose to paint their plasma weapons. A lot of the techniques are very similar. I mean, let's face it, there's not a whole lot of ways to do it. There's not a groundbreaking, brand new, you know, short of doing the 3D print where you put a light inside of it. I mean, painting plasma is, is whatever colors you're using, it's pretty much the same, you know. So I've, I've watched the, the actual um, Games Workshop tutorials with Duncan. I've watched, I've watched a bunch of people do their plasma and I just I've always been looking for different ways to do uh, a plasma and I like blue plasma right so what I'm going to talk about you could do with any color you know the same kind of thing I decided I was going to check out rather than sticking with the same old you know the I started first with the games workshop colors and I branched out to different things and I'm still looking for that perfect my color this is what I think a, a charged up ready to fire plasma cannon would look like here is my, this is my very first um, Executioner Plasma Cannon I ever did. Long time ago, I can't remember. This standard, you know, by their tutorial, Games Workshop Colors. I think off the top of my head, it's like uh, Canter Blue or McCrag Blue. Um, and then Teclas Blue for the highlights. And then some white. Um, you know, I like to... For, for my plasma, I like to give it um, a gloss coat over because I think that gives it sort of like a, I don't know, I imagine this would be a, a kind of a, a glassy look, you know, and it kind of gives it a nice shine, you know, to go with that bright, energized look. So anyway, standard, and, you know, I like it. It's it's not bad, but, well, number one, I wanted my own. I, I wanted to, I want every, every modeler wants their own, you know, you want it to be yours. You want to be able to say, yeah, I came up with this. Um, and like I said before, there's not a hundred different ways to skin this cat here. This one was done pretty much the same, except I gave it a Gilliman Blue um, glaze before I did any of the highlights. And I like the way that came out. One of the other experiments I, I'm still working on is how much of this white highlight do I want to kind of illustrate that charged up, ready to go look. Um, so... I, I think with this one, I went with the Barrowhoff blue uh, instead of the uh, Teclas blue for the, um, you know, the, the light color on there. Um, this one, I used a, instead of the standard, you know, kind of white undercoat, um, I decided to go with a silver, and I used this ammo of MIG silver. This is a great silver, especially for brushing. I mean, it airbrushes really nice, but it brushes really well, too. Very nice and consistent. And I used, uh, where are we, Green Stuff World, Candy Ink, Sapphire Blue. Um, needs a couple coats, and you'll see when we look at this card here. But if you take a look at the way that looks, it really gives it a depth and a bright, vivid look for the dark blue. And then I really went wild with the white and light blue highlights on here. In fact, the white kind of almost drowns out any of the light blue highlights on there. So I don't know, but I mean, I kind of I kind of like this one too. I'm still looking for that perfect blue plasma, though. And so I, you know, one of the things that I had heard about was the Scale 75 paints. And I heard they were great for all sorts of stuff, not just for this. But then I saw that they had this set, Scale, uh, the Sky and Ice, blue. And they came with some really vivid blues. I Actually, there's one other one that I ordered separately, too. But um, it came with all these different blues, and I thought some of these would be great just for the plasma colors. And then I ordered this uh, the Adriatic Blue separately. So anybody can tell you that, you know, you work with paints. It's one thing to see the little color circle on the box. It's one thing to look at it in, in the bottle. Uh, even when it's wet and you put it on, you know, your, your palette paper, that, you know, you, until you actually put it on something and see it dry, though, you never know what that color is going to look like. So I do stuff like this very often. I do this for uh, camouflage in, in one of my Valkyrie videos, I think, or a tank video. I don't remember. Um... I, you know, I did a camouflage thing like this, looking for the right colors for camouflage. I do this a lot. It's time consuming. It takes resources and time, but, you know, doing these little kind of swatches really can, it's the only way that you're going to see what the color looks like when it's finally on something, you know, not just a wet blop or, you know, paint in the bottle. And, you know, if I can show you like, um, what is this, Calador Sky? It, it really does, all, a lot of paints will dry darker than what they look like. 
uh, really does pay to put it. And this is plastic, not paper, by the way. It's very thin plastic stock. And then I also have this that I can take some um, brushfuls of some of the other lighter colors and put them on there in stripes and see how it's going to look. So I did this so I could kind of figure out what is the, the most vivid, um, bold, but you know workable dark blue for my plasma. And I tried a lot of different things. Some of the, you know, most of these are just on a white background, right? So I tried this Vallejo uh, fluorescent, blue fluorescent. I thought, you know, it sounded like fluorescent blue. It's, it's actually, I don't like it. Um, it. It's, I didn't thin it with water when I brushed it by hand, but you can see it's got a, it's, a, it's not a, you definitely need to thin it down to brush it. It is a very deep blue color, but it took a lot of color, a lot of, sorry, a lot of um, coats to get a, a decent deep color. And it, just a little bit of opaqueness there. It's nice looking on the white. Uh, I don't know though. I think it's a very deep, good looking blue, but I think we have other deep, good looking blues that just, I'm not happy with the way it came out. In fact, I decided to try it again over a silver base over here and you can see it came out pretty nice. But what I discovered was uh, I even took the hobby knife and I had uh, masking tape all around these to make them nice and box. I even cut, in fact, I cut so much, I cut the plastic. It didn't want to stick to the silver at all. It, it formed its own like um, latex rubber. Let me see. Now that's a little more dry. Well, it still, it'll still do it. Like it wants to, it wants to come right off. Um, so I was not happy using the um, the blue fluoro. And yeah, look, it's doing it right here too. Now putting it over an actual primer might be different, of course. Um, but this is over another layer of paint that I've used as a base coat before and it, it just it does it's I like the look of it but I, I think that this is this is out um, even though it's got a good look I just don't I think that this probably airbrushes really well for a nice bright opaque blue but not what I'm looking for here the scale 75 canto brick blue um, th now this is another one if you look at the bottle it's much lighter than what it dries as um, so I'm really glad I did this little test because I thought this had the look, and especially online, I bought it all online, it looked much brighter online. Now the Tesla blue, I think the Tesla blue is a beautiful blue to work with as a base. Um, I think, you know, it, good coverage, um, very easy to brush. I think it's close to Calador Sky by Games Workshop, but it just has a little bit more of that bold blue color which I think would look really nice as the base color for a blue plasma weapon, no matter what size the weapon is. So this is definitely a possibility for the base coat. The Mediterranean blue, um, I think I called this Mediterranean blue before, and this is Adriatic blue, sorry. Mediterranean blue, again, little little brighter in the bottle. Um, it's not bad, but it's, it's, it's pretty close to Calador Sky, and it's um, very close to some other games workshop colors too. Plus it's a little, you know, grayish blue as well. And I think that, like I said, what I'm looking for in a plasma color is a very deep, vivid blue to really show that plasma energy underneath it all. So, I mean, when I've got colors like Tesla blue to work with or Calador sky, I don't see Mediterranean blue certainly has some other uses for painting and everything, but it's just not going to work for a plasma color. I don't think now this is in a large skin. Now take a look again small areas with the um, the sapphire blue ink over silver. This is what it looks like with, with large scale coverage with a brush. Um, I think that actually has a really nice look to it. I didn't do a test with just putting it on over white, which I probably should have done, but I think that that actually has a nice potential to be a background for plasma as well. If you take a look at the color and the brightness, that looks really good. Now onto the Adriatic blue. Uh, I think I love the color. I, I think that that's, this might be a potential good like highlight color um, for the first layer, but definitely too bright for me. I mean, if you're going with like a, well, like a turquoise plasma, that might be great. I think that's, it's too bright for the base color for plasma. Um, yeah, it's, it's just too much of a turquoise -ish color. So we're going to set it off to the side. And then I tried just the hell of it. Gilliman blue um, over some silver. We, and, and this is really a glaze. It's, it's uh, I guess, you know, it's a glaze. It's a little bit thicker than a wash, but um, I think it would just take, and this is over silver as well. 
I think that might look nice, but it's just it's it's more hassle than it's worth, um, especially when we have the sapphire blue ink right there. It's going to take too much effort. What I am kind of curious about doing here is maybe mixing a little bit, and I'm thinking this Mediterranean blue, while we said already it's it's kind of too turquoise, what about a little bit of a glaze over it? Um, to see how that would work. So nothing to do here but experiment, and you know, we'll see how it all works. But definitely I want to do one in the Tesla blue, you know, and we're, we're just doing base colors now. Um, you know, we still have to decide what we're going to do for our highlight colors. And we have two more scale 75 colors that I'm dying to try over it. Uh, we have our standard stuff, but I'm thinking either of these, of course, sky blue and Caribbean blue, these would look really, really nice. So this is the scale 75 um, sky blue straight from the, the bottle, not thinned down or anything. Let's just put a little bit on top of the uh, Tesla blue. And that's actually a really nice contrast, you know, if we were going to use that as our highlight color. I think that looks really nice. Um, let's put it on top of now the Adriatic blue. I think that's can barely even see it. Let's drop that on top of if we were going to do this again. Eh, not bad. Um, works nicely with the Calidor sky. Just for the hell, let's put it on top of the Mediterranean blue. Why not? Right there. I do like the contrast over there. I think that looks pretty good. So whenever I get a new bottle of paint, a bottle like this, anyway, I always I got these from Amazon, like a bag of a hundred, like a couple bucks just to make sure that I get them good and shaken. Something I've noticed with the Scale 75 colors too, about half the time there's already a hole in the bottle to use and about half the time I have to make my own hole in the bottle. Here's our Caribbean blue, which actually I think looks really nice against the Tesla. Don't worry, I'll hold this up against the, uh, I'll hold it up to the camera when I'm all done here. process is really time consuming but you know when you're looking for exactly the right combination of colors and you want to make sure that you get it this is just one of the techniques I learned from somebody once about um, how you make sure that you really know what you're working with what the colors are going to be and so we're going to need a second little coat over some of the darker colors but there are there are other paints that I could be pulling out to use here I've got my um, I mean, I've got all different brands. I'm just, I'm trying to keep it relatively simple. Um, so we're gonna do a little Teclas Blue and a little Barrelhoff Blue just to see how it works as well. So I've got them all lined up. We've got Sky Blue, Caribbean Blue, uh, Teclas Blue, and then Barrelhoff Blue. And on the Tesla, so I think the Sky Blue is actually a little bit too dark. Um, I really like the Caribbean Blue. I think it looks a little too green on there though to use for plasma. Um, I think I think the Barrel Hoth Blue is the way to go. Again, I think on the Sapphire though, Barrel Hoth Blue is almost too bright. I think I would consider using that Caribbean Blue. It still has a little bit of a green tint to it, especially on camera here, but it's just a shade darker. Um, I might even use the Sky Blue actually, um, which needs another another coat on there, but I can see it pretty good with my naked eye. Um, the Adriatic Blue, you can barely see that Sky Blue on there. I think with the Adriatic Blue, the, the Barrel Hoth Blue wins again as well. Uh, let me get a white primer painted on here, and then we'll go with some color. have our three cannon ready to go. We have this one done by brush, and these airbrushed, primed all the way around. So normally, obviously, I, you know, I paint the whole cannon before 
I do the plasma. I'll just have to do these backwards, not a problem. I think I'm going to actually try the um, candy ink on a white background. I've I just haven't done it before. So, you know, even though that was not part of our test here, we'll give it a shot and see how it goes. We've got the Tesla blue, and I honestly have not figured out what the third color is going to be. I might, even though I said I didn't like it that much, I, I might go with the uh, Adriatic blue as a background and see how that looks. It's a very bright color, but you know, we'll see. So I'm going to start with the uh, Tesla blue. Uh, if you remember, I said I, I did the, the color card uh, undiluted, but for what I'm doing here, uh, I want a slightly more control over the paint where it's going and I don't mind doing multiple coats in favor of a better control over the paint because you know I already have the main color applied there so and obviously it is going to take two to three coats of paint to get this color to the kind of vibrant deep blue that we want in between coats of the Tesla blue, let's start with our candy ink, our sapphire blue, and see how that is going to apply for us. I don't think we need to thin this down at all. This flows very, very nicely. It's already got kind of a pretty liquid texture on it. Uh, I think it's going to need a few coats anyway. But yeah, this uh, actually flows great over the white. I don't, I don't know why I thought it would need a silver base coat. I thought, I guess that was just to give it more of a, um, I don't know, mechanical look. Now, I'm getting a little bit on there. That's fine, because we're going to do the slight glow effect on there later. But that's looking great already. So these first two are done. This is the Tesla blue, which is a, I mean, it looks great. It's a very deep, very vivid blue. Let me turn on this light on top of the camera so we have a little bit more. Um, that is a beautiful plasma blue color. So this is uh, three coats, just to make sure we got it completely. I love it. It's, it's uh, I mean, it's just a really, really nice blue. This is the blue I think of when I think of like a, the, the deep blue of a plasma cannon. It's perfect. I'm also very pleasantly surprised with how well the candy ink came out um, over the white. One of the things I love is the glossy finish of it, and unfortunately, um, we're going to lose that when I uh, finish the, the tank off and I do a dull coat over the whole thing, unless I just do this whole piece independently and, you know, dull coat the other parts with the brush and everything. But and I, I'm going to gloss coat that it as, you know, the plasma areas anyway, but um, what ended up happening all on its own, if you can see, is that some of the ink, because it's an ink, not a paint, so you know the pigment's a little finer and stuff, it settled in the recesses for us, sort of almost as if it was a wash. Um, so you've got a vibrant blue color, not as much as as the Tesla blue, but it's still pretty nice. But you've got that very dark, almost as if we'd put a wash or a glaze in there. Um, so I think that's also gonna be a really nice base color for us to, to look at. What we're gonna do next, I think, oh, that's two coats um, of the uh, candy ink sapphire blue. I think I'm actually gonna go with the Mediterranean blue, even though I said I didn't like the way it looked. And I'm sorry, the Adriatic blue. It's almost got a turquoise look. I think it's gonna be an interesting blue um, color and it's going to give us something different to look at and experiment with. So I think I'm going to do um, just like the Tesla blue, three coats of the Adriatic blue on the third cannon and see how that comes out. So this is the Adriatic blue and you know what I was thinking? Okay, so if this is going to be like our, our baseline blue, a regular blue, and we use um, a color like Teclas blue for the, the charged kind of color over the baseline blue, this would be a great base color if you wanted to model a supercharged plasma cannon. Because, um, you know, you have that option. You could, like, you know, roll with them as, as regular or supercharged and, um, 
if you just wanted to model one that's that's supercharged it would be you know probably brighter i think it's just an idea i had as i was painting it but so these are the three colors we're going to be working with i decided to go ahead and just try the caribbean blue out a little bit on the tesla blue just to you know kind of see what it was might look like and uh I actually think it's gonna look pretty good and I'll do four colors here instead of three so we'll give it some Caribbean blue highlights and then we'll give it a brighter color on top before we hit it with the white all right so we got that on and um, I tried to leave as much of the dark blue in between the coils as I could just to give it some depth and, and kind of show the color um, separation and everything. It's a little messy on the sides, but it'll clean up when it's all done. Um, but I think it looks pretty good so far. I'm happy with that color choice. So before I go into the other colors, I'm going to move on to the next Canon, which is our Sapphire Blue. And it's actually a, a day, a couple days later, um, from when I did the last part. So I think I decided I was gonna go with the sky blue. Um, I can't exactly remember, but that's what I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna go with sky blue on this one because I think that's gonna be um, nice. And then, you know, we'll do four colors on this one as well and highlight with the barrel hot blue. So let me uh, find the sky blue, which is right here. A little shake and get it ready. And I'll just do the same thing. Um, so I'll try to keep it on the coils and preserve as much of the underneath color as possible. Um, you know, and actually now that I think about it, I might I might just jump right to the Barrel Hoth Blue and just do three colors because I really like the color on this and I don't want to, uh, I just, I just want to leave it as is. So let's just see how that looks. Yeah, I think that's going to look pretty nice. Yeah, that's actually coming out really good. All right, I think we got a good effect going on with the uh, the sapphire blue and the sky blue. I like that. I think, you know, on its own it looks good. I think probably right now, you know, it's indistinguishable from uh, a standard... Um... No, actually, it actually... It is, you can tell the colors apart from the standard Games Workshop colors, actually. Um, and I think it's a nice choice, so it looks pretty good. Um, and this, I think you can definitely tell the difference. Of course, you know, still need to add some colors to it and everything, but I really, I really like them so far. I think the big if is going to be using the Adriatic Blue. What are we going to do with this one? Because that is just a, it's almost a, a turquoise greenish blue so um, we're gonna go right to the barrel half blue with that one I think the Adriatic blue might be the wrong base color to use but you know we're kind of we're in it now I don't feel like repainting the whole thing so we'll just go with it and we'll see how it looks at the end well there's not a lot of contrast between those colors and I'm not real happy with the way it came out I mean you know you experiment you try you see how it goes I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of uh, maybe Gilliman Blue and just very, very lightly um, or water down maybe something a little bit darker. I don't know, but but some other blue and just put it in the recesses there. You know, when you look at it on a big square, there's a nice contrast between them. But with such small areas, it's just really hard to see the Adriatic Blue underneath. So I, I just want to put a little bit of darkness in the recess there to really make a blue color stand out. Um, and then, you know, I'll be ready to move on to the next highlight color for everything there. All right, well, a little bit of progress uh, in the intervening time. So I took some Barrel Hoth Blue and I gave a third, well, second highlight color, third color to this one. And I think it looks pretty good. I tried to um, still leave uh, enough of the Tesla blue as background color. If you can see, I, I, I left the sky blue 
Uh, it might be hard to tell, but not every coil is painted in the Barrel Hoth blue. So, um, I put some highlights. I, I That's my new thing that I've been doing, putting the uh, energy highlights there. I think that's going to just, you know, amp it up just a, a little nicely before we go on to the white. Uh, for this one, the one that was painted in the Mediterranean blue, I wasn't happy with the amount... Um, I just didn't like the look, so what I did was I took a very, very thin down Gilliman blue and made sure to paint it just in the recesses. So you have a little bit of a darker blue uh, in the recesses. You still have the Mediterranean blue, which now kind of looks like we we did a you know two highlight color. I guess I changed it up a little bit. Um, so you've got the you know the coils that are um, Mediterranean blue, and you can kind of see here a little bit of the the two colors showing up how I did it. But now I'm ready to paint my white highlights, uh, which I will start with just on the edges, and then I'll see if I want to extend it to the middle a little bit like I did on this one. Did I do it on this one? Yeah. Did a little bit on this one. Did it a lot bit on this one. Uh, we'll see how that works out. As an interesting, well, you know, I think side note to this all, I don't know why I, I was motivated to try it out, but I have, I have it, you know, infrared and IR, sorry, UV flashlight. And so take a look at our fluorescent blue under UV light. It actually does fluoresce. It it shines very nice, and you know I can compare it to some of the other ones that just don't do that uh, at all. You know they're not made to do that. Um, but this one looks really cool, um, even on the little color swatch paper. Check that out. Um, it's still, I, I'm not. I'm not regretting not using it because what are the chances you're going to be playing in some kind of area that's UV lit? But for your own effects, you know, you could paint your plasma with this as the base color and, you know, it would actually glow if you managed to, to light it with UV. I have different degrees of aggressiveness with the white, starting with this one, which is, you know, kind of, I think it, it, this is my most aggressive plasma painting, I, I guess we'd say. Um, so... We've got that one, which this one had a little bit of dry brushing on the sides to lighten it up, give a little more energized look, um, which I'm not sure I'm happy with now, but you know, this is all, you know, experiment. We'll see what we like. Um, but I took, you know, a very, very small brush, very small brush, and I actually painted the individual coils. Um, so that's how that turned out. And then in these other two, I used more of a dry brush technique to have them uh, just do the, just do the corners, really. Um, and I think it's hard to tell because these don't have the actual color, you know, of the tank yet. It doesn't have, it does, you know, these have color on it to really, you know, dark colors to really accentuate the light color over there. Um, but I think that the, the plasma coil effect is, is pretty good. I really kind of like uh, what's going on here. Uh, I just the Mediterranean blue. I don't think I don't think it's working out, you know, as as I had hoped. I just think it's more of a turquoise, and it's not. It's almost like it, it has the look of, you know, if you don't know what colors are involved, somebody took like just a Teclas blue or a Barrowhoff blue and threw it on his base color, and then just gave white highlights to it. Um, you know, at least this has depth of color going on. I want to put a a clear coating on all of them now, because I like that shiny look for the plasma. So I'm gonna work on that, and then we'll do the edge highlights for that guy. And you got a little bit of a glossiness to them now. All right, I think that looks pretty nice. Um, I just, I like, the, I like the glossy finish, like I said earlier, on the, uh, the plasma. I don't know, just, so I love using the um, Alclad uh, gloss clear coat. This is the lacquer, not their um, their acrylic. It airbrushes great. It, it brush brushes great, and it you know gives it a really nice finish. So uh, you know I don't there's some, I, I can't decide if I want to go with 
the more pronounced plasma, you know, the white. I think I'm going to leave it, you know, like this. I don't know. This will be something I'll ask you guys' opinion on. What do you like? Do you like the... Do you like the extra white on the side? Or do you like uh, kind of white just on the edges as a highlight? So the last thing I want to do is I want to take a little bit of the Barrelhoff Blue. And I'm just going to give a little edge highlight. Just a little bit. Um, just around the edges for a little bit. I, I don't like a huge kind of plasma glow effect, like OSL effect, I should say. Um, I mentioned that before. It's kind of not my thing, but just to kind of give it that little bit of a I stopped talking in mid-sentence and I totally forgot what I was going to say. But just the, you know, highlight of a, of a blue glowing plasma kind of thing. I think some people, I and mean, this is just my honest opinion, some people way overdo the, the OSL on the plasma and I think that kind of kills the, the effect of everything else you've done. Right, and so, I mean, it's not much, but it's just enough to give it a little bit of glow out there, right? So let's kind of, I can't do it on these, again, because i got to finish the actual painting on the, those pieces. But let's kind of take a look at everything lined up, and, I don't know, everybody kind of pick their favorite. Alright, so I'm ending this with a voiceover because... I guess I forgot to turn the microphone on as I recorded these last couple of clips. I apologize. So here's everything lined up. Here, you know, all the, the original ones uh, and the ones that I, I worked on. So original meaning ones that I had finished prior to doing this little experiment. Now, looking again at, at the very first one I did, purely by Games Workshop's instructions, um, you know, I think it, it works. It's the standard way to do it, standard colors. And I broke that stubber again, which I am constantly breaking. So this one is also kind of standard Games Workshop colors, you know, nothing special going on. But with a, a Gilliam and Glaze, um, this one is the first sapphire ink over silver. Um, look at the, you can see the rough kind of texture on that but I, I like the way it came out to sort of give a glowing kind of effect. But lots of white, you know, highlights. So here's the first one with the Tesla blue. I, I actually really like the way this came out. Um, you know, could have been done a, bit, a little bit neater on the sides, but you know, the coils aren't very perfectly pronounced on the sides of these plasma cannons, unfortunately. So, you know, you got to work what you got. Uh, this one is the Sapphire Ink. Uh, over white, which I think came out great. I think it looks really, really nice, especially in the recesses. And then this one is the Adriatic blue that I called Mediterranean blue all day long throughout the video. Um, I think it looks, you know, not as bad as I originally thought, especially once I put the glaze into the recesses. And I think, again, the clear, the clear coat really kind of pulls everything together and gives everything a nice look. I'm happier, much happier now that I clear coated everything. I have no idea what I was actually saying originally here. Maybe I was just shaking it going, this is a turret. You know, I, the colors definitely do pop a little bit more when you have a fully painted cannon, when it's not all white and you have the, the external colors on there as well. So I think it's easier to judge the, the fully painted ones. So take, take a look at this. This is the, the Pimp Wagon uh, painted with Green World uh, Chameleon paints. This was my, my dedicated hand of steel that, that Pask is going to ride in all the time. And this is where this cannon goes. So this really get, lets you get a sense of where this cannon is going to live, uh, where it's going to belong. It's going to belong to this tank. And so all of this tank is shiny and in your face. I don't think Pask would really ride in this tank, mind, mind you. I just wanted it. I wanted to mess with the paints, and I wanted to make something that would really stand out to identify, you know, Pask. Um, so... But, I mean, the colors 
really do stand out from the tank. I think they, they really work well. I, I think I overdid it with the highlights a little bit. I would have been happier leaving more of the Tesla blue visible. What do you guys think of that? Here is uh, a turret that's going to get... Um, it actually it takes one of those other finished cannons, but here's just an idea of what one of those, the colors would look like. You know, on my typical Lehman Rust paint scheme, it's a really nice vibrant blue. I really like the way the candy ink came out. In fact, you know, on further reflection, the candy ink might be my favorite, um, the favorite look of all of them. Um, and the Adriatic blue, while probably the bottom of the three, actually, it, once I put that glaze in there in the middle of the coils, it, it has a really nice look. It's, it's got a dark in the middle, but bright on the coils look. I think it's pretty good. Um, I'm, I'm happy with how it came out. Not my favorite, but I'm pretty happy. I can't wait till I, you know, mate these cannon up with the tanks that they're going to live in so that I can, you know, see if they're going to be painted in the style of my, there I am screwing up, which gun goes to which uh, tank for real, but, you know, want to see if, uh, how it's going to look in the tank that it, that it actually is going to belong to. You know, I might decide to try a different paint scheme out or whatever. The fluff of my army is that my entire regiment is made up of uh, stragglers and, and remnants from other units um, thrown together to make sort of any an elite kind of all-star army. Uh, that way I have the freedom to paint them however I want at any time. So uh, I, I don't know how those two white ones are going to end up painted overall. Well, I had said at the beginning of this uh, video uh, I wasn't going to do anything groundbreaking here. I wasn't going to reinvent the wheel or reinvent the way we do plasma. I just wanted to try some things out. So I'd love and welcome your opinions, your comments, your criticism. What do you think? Um, anybody think that this... I, I'm sure that some people do think that the method I use to select colors is way too much and, and too intensive, but when you really want to make a color decision, doing the, the, swatch, the swatches like that really does... There's nothing better than actually putting color on something and seeing how it turns out. But um, Just, you know, one method of how you're going to do stuff. Um, before, you know, short of just throwing paint on your model itself and then having to strip it off later. But I think I have selected how I'm going to do plasma from here on out. Uh, it's either going to be the Tesla blue base or it's going to be the candy ink over white. It's going to be one of those two. Maybe both. Maybe I'll go back and forth. But at least, you know, I've tried it out and I know what it's going to be. So I really do welcome all of your comments. Um, you know, if you've got ideas let's hear I you know if you really if you like this stuff please do I never say this in videos but like subscribe I'm really trying to get this channel off the ground I'm trying to make it um, so that I can so that it, it can dedicate more time to it and uh, give more attention to it my other channel is, is doing really really well and uh, so I kind of have to dedicate more time to that because um, it has you know many many more subscribers and gets a lot more attention and, and actually makes me some money I want to be able to focus the same amount of attention to this channel, too, because I love doing this stuff. So please do, you know, subscribe, um, tell your friends, uh, get help me get this channel going, and I can do more and more projects. So also, let me know what you guys, if there's something special that you guys want to see. Um, I know there's a lot of modeling-related channels out there, but, you know, maybe there's something that you haven't seen before that you'd like to, and, and I'll, I'll do my best, all right? So thanks for watching with me, guys. Hope it was entertaining, and I'll be back again with another vid real soon.